Hello everyone, my name is Mini Sethi. I hope you all are staying healthy. Today we are going to talk about classical conditioning theory of learning. This theory is given by Ivan Pavlov. Ivan Pavlov was a Russian psychologist and this theory is based on one experiment on dogs means with the help of this experiment we will understand whole theory and we will also discuss some real life example of this theory and experiment basically divided into three stages before conditioning during conditioning and after conditioning one by one we discuss about each stage. So firstly we are going to talk about first stage of this experiment which is called before conditioning. In this stage unconditioned stimulus generate unconditioned response. In this stage unconditioned stimulus generate unconditioned response. What do you mean by unconditioned stimulus? Unconditioned stimulus are those stimulus which are not forcing us to give response. We automatically give response when we see unconditioned stimulus. Please listen carefully. Unconditioned stimulus are those stimulus which are not forcing us to give response. We automatically give response when we see unconditioned stimulus. For example, when dog see food, automatically water will fill in his mouth. Nobody is forcing him. Or we can say that when dog see food, automatically he will salivate. Nobody forcing him. Here food is our unconditioned stimulus. To see food, dog salivate. That's why salivation will call unconditional response. So we can say that in this stage, unconditional stimulate generate unconditioned response. In first stage, before conditioning, we were also ringing bell in front of dog. But when we rang bell in front of dog, dog didn't give any kind of response. Or we can say that when we rang bell in front of dog, dog didn't salivate. Obviously, why should dog salivate when we are ringing bell in front of dog? So here bell is our neutral stimulus and neutral stimulant initially don't produce any kind of response. Now we are going to talk about second stage which is called during conditioning. In this stage we will actually do conditioning of dog's mind. Here we will simultaneously present food and ring bell in front of dog. Or we can say that whenever we present food in front of dog, firstly we ring the bell. Here food is our unconditioned stimulus as we earlier discussed and bell is our conditioned stimulus. Earlier in first stage, bell was neutral stimulus, but now bell become conditioned stimulus because now we are using bell for doing conditioning of dog's mind. When we simultaneously present food and ring bell in front of dog, dog salivate and salivation of dog will call unconditioned response. Why salivation of dog will call unconditioned response? Because here our unconditional stimulus food also present. Now we are going to talk about third stage which is called after conditioning. In this stage we will not present food in front of dog. We will just ring the bell and dog will salivate. In this stage we will not present food in front of dog. We will just ring the bell and dog will salivate. Here bell is conditioned stimulus because we are using bell for doing conditioning of dog's mind. And salivation is called conditioned response. Why salivation is called conditioned response? Because here our unconditioned stimulus food is not present. Dog is salivating only because of bell. That's why salivation is called conditioned response. So here we see during first stage before conditioning when we rang bell in front of dog, dog didn't give any response, dog didn't salivate. But during third stage after conditioning when we rang bell in front of dog, dog salivate. Why dog salivate in third stage? Because in second stage dog has learned that there is some connection between food and bell. Whenever bell ring, he get food. That's why in third stage, he was salivating on bell. Even he was not getting food. This is called learning of dog or we can say that this is called learning through conditioning of mind. 
Now we understand this theory with the help of some real life examples. Initially, a child was crying a lot when he came to school. That's why first few days his teacher gave him chocolate when he came to school. As a result, he stopped crying. Slowly, slowly he learned to enjoy in school. Now he doesn't cry. Even his teacher is not giving him chocolate. So this is called learning through conditioning of mind. Second example is suppose your employees are not performing good. So in order to improve their performance, initially you give them some rewards or incentives. As a result, their performance will increase and soon they will get perfection in their work. Now they will perform well even you are not giving them any reward or incentive. So this is called learning through conditioning. Next example is, suppose every Friday you receive your salary. That's why on Friday you feel very happy. Now you have changed your job. Here you receive your salary on different day. But you still feel very happy on Friday because your mind has been conditioned to connect that day with positivity. So this is all about classical conditioning theory of learning. I think you got it and thank you so much for watching this video. Bye. Take care.